we welcome the return of an individual. A triumphant return. It's been a while since we have had uh, this particular gentleman on. And you know how we usually bat lead off here on Mondays. We have our friends from 92.9 The Game dropping by. And it's been quite a while since uh, this this gentleman has, has has been a part of the morning here on the morning show on Mondays. So we, uh, I, I, you know, I don't have a drum roll drop. I, I'm trying to think. Let's see, do I have anything that's appropriate that would be, I'm trying to say, and this is what happens when you have like a boatload of drops and you're trying to sit here and say, would any of these be appropriate for, uh, for doing this particular segment? Let me see if we, uh, Uh, oh maybe well how about this penny (laughs) sheldon okay so that was close he's knocking on the door time to let him in garrett chapman good morning chap what's going on brother hey i like the big bang theory that's that's a pretty good one hey it's one it's one of the most successful long-running tv shows in america i'll take that i'll take that and and so uh knocking on the door this morning and it's time for garrett chapman to hang out with us and then break down everything from his perspective sure his brain, his his galaxy brain that he brings into us on, on a Monday. So uh, traditionally what I'll do is I'll ask, now that you've had, you know, a day and a half to, to let everything digest from what happened in Charlotte, in a, in really a, a situation where you needed to win to keep pace just to make sure that mm-hmm. you stayed north of the playoff bar. Now that you've yes. had 36 hours or so to digest what went down in Charlotte, what are the things that stick out in your brain? Ooh, so I, I think Alexa Mirajuk looked really good. The team as a whole looked solid. And I just want to see more of that. Uh, I mean, that's really the biggest thing for this team right now is it's just that building that consistency. It's, it's, it's a tough schedule down the down the stretch. Uh, I think it's four more playoff teams that they have to play in their final five games or <sighs> something like that. It's it's kind of brutal as it stands right now, but you get the week off and then you get up back up to um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium for a game against Nashville. but. Look, at the end of the day, like this team, they are who they are. And they have some glaring weaknesses. And the on Saturday, they were able to play through them. And I, I think that they were able to create some opportunities, which I think was really nice. Uh, they led the game in shots. It was pretty balanced as far as possession goes. So they were able to play on the front foot in terms of that. I mean, Charlotte's not a team that really wants to play with possession, but you still matched them 50-50. Um, Ultimately, it's like the identity of this team is is still up for grabs. I, I don't know who they are really on a, on a week-to-week basis, but the defense played well. Brad played really well, um, and you created some opportunities. And, look, Jay Fortune scored, and I love that. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, – you know, we have made a point to have – our thoughts about the twos and our coverage of the twos Mm -hmm. be a part of our DNA ever since they, ever since they broke bread, broke ground and played up at cool Ray. We've always wanted to let everybody know about what's going on with the twos, because if that path is true for some individuals, they're coming from the twos and they're getting reps with the first team and they're doing what they're doing. You know, Caleb Wiley is an example. Caleb goes twos. Caleb goes first team. Caleb goes to league Uh, McDonald's. And I mean that because that's the sponsor. So, you, know, you have that progression as a part of the process when it comes to world soccer. And so we've done the same with Jay. We've seen what Jay has been able to do with the twos. We've seen him develop to get the first team minutes and get the international time with uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And to have a moment like that for someone who has busted his ass, and I'm yeah. going to say he has literally busted his ass 14 minutes into the show on a Monday. I'm hitting the explicit rating and I don't care. To, to have a moment like that for Jay, you could not be happier for someone like that who has invested so much to get to this point of his career. Absolutely. I mean, look, he had some quality. And I, I, I like that it finally put itself on display with, in terms of a goal. Um, I think having a guy like Alexi Marinchuk is going to help him specifically. He's one of those guys who it's it's going to you know create opportunities for him. And that's why we brought Marinchuk into this into the system. Because... Sabalo Janitza had two great shots on, on target, like which were created because of Alexi. They're both assisted by him. So that's why they brought him. It's because he has that world-class vision. Uh, they see him and it's his per 90 stats are, are off the charts just in terms of doing that. And and ultimately, I don't know if that's more to do with just the way that Atalanta plays, uh, the Italian side, but you see the vision. 
and you see the flashes and and he's thrown into the fire and it's like he needs to come in here and do big big things and i'm not trying to to overshadow what jay fortune did in his development either with the discussion about Alexi Marinchuk, but i really liked what i saw from jay jay was he stepped into this role that tiago almada left and uh i mean it was going to be impossible for him to fill those shoes really but I, I think he did an admirable job and and look he can be a very strong mls player and, and that's great Checking, since you have advanced the conversation to uh, Alexi Miranchuk, here are the numbers for the man. And, and I think that after getting the cup of coffee last time out uh, mm-hmm. in, in Los Angeles at uh, Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, I can't remember the zip code off the top of my head, um, you you have the thought that maybe uh, Miranchuk can give you 45, that maybe he can give you 55 to 60. Mm-hmm. By the end of the night, our friends at SofaScore give Miranchuk a 7 on the board Going 89 minutes, 62 touches, 42 of 57 passing at 74%, two key passes, one for one on his crosses, four successful long balls in six attempts, had the one shot off target, and then he also had two dribbles passed. And I think that when you see somebody like Miranchuk, you can see, I mean, for those of us with television cameras, we can see the imagination. We can almost see things working in three dimensions, and you'll have that that imaginative scoop like he had against Los Angeles. And you see what he has uh, going up against Charlotte. I'm I'm intrigued. I want to see him become more comfortable. I want to see that skill set, and I want to see it expand when he's more comfortable with his teammates and he knows in three dimensions, okay, I know that. You know, I know that Jamal is going to do this. I know that Daniel Rios is going to do this. I know Saab is going to do this. I'm looking forward to seeing that imagination in three dimensions from Alexi Miranchuk because he becomes more comfortable with those around him that he gets uh, to hang out with here with Atlanta United. Yeah, and, and ultimately, like I don't think there's a bigger winner than Alexi Miranchuk when it comes to uh, having a bye week right now, B- building up some chemistry with his teammates and training, get some proper reps and out there. And, of course, you had the break, where he, the extended break, where he was able to get in and, and – get that done but he only really had three training sessions with the guys you know because he comes in after the fact you have to wait for your visa and everything else to and all the technical stuff fortunately we didn't have to wait too long with that but we've seen that in the past <laughs> but uh, look yeah. he was able to jump in and, and, and hit the ground running and that's a credit to him it's a credit to the to the training staff and it's a credit to everybody involved but having a full week of actual preparation and and, and getting onto the pitch and practicing with the guys is going to do him wonders and building up some of that chemistry, you know, because it, it's like, and I'm not going to compare it to Magic Johnson or whatever. I don't like making cross sport analogies, but it's like when, but I'm going to do it anyway. There you go, bro. Um, uh, Magic Johnson, when he was a rookie, like when he's running up and down the court and he's doing all these little, like, little weird passes and everything like that, he's very imaginative with the ball mm-hmm. and he's going to get you in the ball in weird spots, maybe when you're not expecting it. Do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you just got to be ready for some magic. Yeah, that's that's really the biggest thing. And those are the expectations for Alexa Miranchuk. And that's when you you come into a place like Atlanta, a place that's soccer crazed, that wants its its team to do well. You you're going to come in and wear the number ten. There are a lot of great players who've won that number ten. You got to be coming in ready to deliver on some hype. Yep, and uh, Miranchuk is is the ten being five nine on the back of the jerseys. Okay, so th- I, I, let's continue the the uh, the cross sport uh, analogies here. So if Alexi Miranchuk is Magic Johnson to you, let's continue the showtime element here. How would you look at Shande Silva? Is he Jamal Wilkes? Is he James Worthy? I mean, for me, a guy like Shande <laughs> Silva, Shande Silva to me is a rhythm guy. Mm-hmm. And, in, you know, like, it, and, and I'm going to really anger a lot of Lakers fans here. But to me, he reminds me of Vinny Johnson from the Detroit Pistons. Okay. Vinny Johnson comes in off the bench. You feed him the ball. He's knocking down threes. Once again, he's a rhythm guy. You feed him, he goes. Same with Silk Wilkes. You find Silk Wilkes off the wing. Magic finds him Silk squares from, say, 20, you know, and, and he fires him up. But you've got to get that first shot. He gets that first shot knocked down. Then he's comfortable. He's in the rhythm of the game. And then he's not afraid to, to do things and be imaginative. You know, Shonda, yeah. Shonda played 65 7.5 from Sofa Score, tied. Well, let's see. He was tied for third with the highest rating of the day for the position players. Brad obviously punched an 8.5. Brooks a yeah. 7.9. Stiana 7.6. Jay and Shande 7.5. Derek a 7.4. Amador a 7.2. And I think that's big that your entire back line punched north of a 7 in all of this. The only people that were less than 7 were Saba and Jamal. But I think that Shande's mm-hmm. a rhythm guy. 
where 39 touches, 23 of 26 passing at 88%, three key passes, one long ball, one big chance created, had a shot on target and had another shot as well. Two shots blocked, one dribble attempt successful, one one ground duel, and that's what you're looking at, Shandy. So to me, Benny Johnson, Silk Wilkes, James Worthy, how would you play that one out? You know, he is kind of that kind of guy, you, you know, where he, he he needs to have the ball at his feet and he needs to play. Uh, mm-hmm. And he needs to get shots off, and he needs yeah. to do everything like that. And, and unfortunately for for Jean de Silva, is he's one of the biggest detractors, and one of the detractors, not the right word. He's mm-hmm. one of the biggest losers from when uh, Tiago Almada leaves because he doesn't have the ability to, to to really create on that other side because he's asked to come in and and, and do kind of pick up the the slack that was left, and and he's just a kind of the guy who just needs to be left on the side and left alone and left to to kind of do his thing. Because he is, he does run hot and cold. Yep. And when he's hot, uh, he's he's a good player, you know, and he, he's somebody who can really contribute to a winning side in MLS. And it's just that when he's off, this team falls off in a big way. And, and they needed him. That left wing has been just a hole for this team for much of this season. And a lot of that had to do with him getting hurt and, and dealing with injuries throughout the course of the season early on, especially back in that, that ugly stretch in April, May, June. Um, but it's it's just you need to see more consistency from him. Like Absolutely. when I when I talk about consistency about this team needing it, yeah. back when Gonzalo Pineda was here and everything else, the team lacked consistency. And, and John De Silva is the perfect example of that. Somebody who, I mean, if he gets hot and he gets going, I you see the flashes, and it's just it doesn't happen often enough and at a consistent level enough for me to be a big believer in John De Silva. Right. Silva on a, on a game in game out basis, but. Look, when he's hot, you see what he can do. Yeah, and you have uh, you know a guy like Jamal up top who who absolutely busts his ass on a daily basis. May not yeah. show up stats, may not show up with you know number of touches and things like that and output, but you see what's going on with Jamal uh, as a part of this as well. Is there anybody else that is in the Garrett Chapman spot shadow from what happened on the weekend that you sat there and it's like, oh, okay, so here's the talking point. Here's, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. What else is on your mind after what happened in Charlotte? How about some love for Brad Guzan? There you go. I mean, my goodness, what he was able to, he reverses the clock every now and then. And <laughs> he just sort of comes out and, 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 and does that. I mean, I mean, both keepers really. I mean, the Charlotte keeper actually played at a really high level. Yeah, well. oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, the I, the, the uh, yeah, the the uh, uh, Kalina train is definitely something that uh, mm-hmm. it, he said. Christian Kalina saves Charlotte's collective bacon more than I think they care to it, uh, admit at times. Yeah. Uh, Brad's numbers. We'll go through Kalina's too, since you mentioned keepers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad six saves on the day. One high claim, which in sofa score terminology, that means that you're, you know, that you're jumping up and you're grabbing something, you know, above the other players. Uh, four saves from inside the 18, 55 touches, 30 of 40 passing at 75 percent, 15 of 25 on long balls. So 30 of 40 passing, 15 of 25 on long balls. So half of his accurate passes were long balls coming out of the 18. And so, you know, you're looking at what, 15? And so the other accurate passes, 15 of 15 on the day that were close range stuff. One clearance, one ground duel, one fouled once as well. And so, in the interest of equal time, Christian Kalina didn't have as high a number as Brad, a 7.8, but Kalina, five saves, goals prevented, according to Sofa Score, 1.46, had the high claim, five saves mm-hmm. from inside the box, 90% passing at 18 to 20 on 36 touches four of six on his long balls. But I think that, you know, you see how Dean Smith has this reliance on Christian Kalina. And yeah. why is it, why is it on God's green earth that it seems like every keeper known to mankind, known or otherwise, seems to want to have the game of games going up against Atlanta United? Fortunately, this time, Atlanta got the one past him, though. Yeah, look, I can't explain any of that. <laughs> uh, look, the soccer gods have have weird weird vendettas against different people, you know, and things happen. Yes. Just as Shonda Silva. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, really. I know. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. but look, Brad played a really good game. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest story for Atlanta right now. It's, you know, you bring in his replacement at the beginning of this year, and a lot of people clamored for the replacement. Yeah, Josh. You know? yeah. yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I like Cohen. I, I thought Cohen was brought in. I mean, he's a good player. But, of course, 
look, Brad's still the guy. Mm-hmm. Brad's still wearing that captain armband. And Brad is still, you know, Brad. And he hasn't formally announced what his, his future decisions are going to be. I, I don't know if his career is going to continue here in Atlanta right. at the end of this season. But, look, dude, performances like that make it a little bit harder uh, for you to make the decision, you know, to move on officially. All right. But, man, oh, man, look at him go. I love yeah. it. Yeah, uh, one of nine players who uh, has to come up with a decision or have a mutual conversation by the end of the calendar year when it comes to Atlanta United. Uh, the conference standings, a- as we speak, as we as we are discussing, it was two points separating everybody from nine to the bottom coming into the weekend. Seven teams separated by two points. And now, once again, Atlanta United gets the win. They get some separation in this. So now it's seven teams only separated by five points as opposed to seven teams separated by two. But Atlanta United doing what they need to do, taking care of business. The only thing missing is the the Elvis Presley uh, necklace with the lightning bolt and the TCB on it. Yeah. Uh, did their thing, took care of business. And now the margin is five from Atlanta United to the bottom. But it's uh, as uh, our, our you know, as one of our own Nick, Nick Alipi says, it's going to be a knife fight in a phone booth between now and the end of the season with everything going on. Two points behind Toronto in eighth. Then you've got six points uh, to get to Orlando, but Toronto has a match in hand. It's going to be chaos. And so I, I would just, you know, make sure that everybody is taking their tums or what the, whatever they need to do between now and the, the end of the season because Enjoy the international break for what it is. You get a chance to catch your breath, but then it's midweek weekend, midweek weekend, and get you rolling through. So, uh, it, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be even more chaotic. But at least there's a little bit more space now instead of seven by two. Now seven by five. Yeah, look, you you got you have your work cut out for you. You know what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Look at the schedule and and, and see how brutal that is. Oof. And I mean, you play. I think it's Red Bulls. You played Red Bulls twice. You got a chance to play Union. I mean. You're playing the teams that are fighting for your spots, yeah. you know. So, if Atlanta makes the playoffs, it's because they earned it. They and earned it. oh, that reminds me, I got to get that drop from uh, John Houseman. Let's see. <laughs> They've done it the old-fashioned way. They've earned it. Let's see. So Smith Barney, you see, you see how my mind works here on the show. Hey man, S- Smith Barney. Well, crap. Okay, so so much for that marker. That one's done. I got to grab another pen. So nothing like having things crap out on a Monday. So let's see, Smith Barney. Uh, John Hausman. All right. So I've got to get that drop and add it to the mix. So, uh, I mean, it's going to be, so as I wanted to look at the schedule and try to anticipate what you were talking about, but of course a pen died and everything went to hell. Uh, okay. So here's what, here's the rest of the schedule as we kind of plot everything through. So it is international window. Then on the 14th, it is Nashville. And so that's your Saturday night game. Mm-hmm. Then midweek, Messi and friends come by for a 7.30 on a Wednesday. Don't know about Messi. He, you know, did set the world on fire by doing workouts on his own the other day. Uh, and so everyone... I don't expect he's going to play in that game. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you're co- coming if, to Atlanta, playing on the turf, playing yeah. and everything. He's not going to play in that game. Yeah. So, and if, and if he sucks. Play, yeah, if he That's played two matches in a row. Yeah, if he played on the weekend, then he ain't going to be playing midweek. Or if he does, it's a cameo where he waves at everybody and sits there mm-hmm. and says, hey, you know, hi, thanks for dropping by. Then after that, three matches in eight days, you've got Red Bulls at Red Bull Arena. They don't have Emil Forsberg, so they're hoping he's healthy on the flip side of the break or healthier. Then you've got a week, and then you're going to see Philly at Subaru Park. Then you've got another midweek after that where it's Atlanta hosting Montreal, and we know – that uh, Montreal has everybody saying Mon Dieu up in the uh, Provence de Quebec with everything going on right now. And then you've got Red Bulls coming to see you on the 5th. Then you've got another week off before you go and finish up against the Purple team uh, on the 19th of October. So, uh, yeah, so it, yeah, it's a real easy ride, isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it, Chappie? Real easy? Yeah. Several playoff teams look linked in there. You know, I mean, you earned it. Yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, and it's you don't get the you don't get the beautiful beauty of playing a, like a San Jose or something like that or something <sighs> this trash. No not, Chicago's anymore. Yeah, not, not, already, but that's the thing. This team made its bed. Yeah, you know it it, it blew its 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 opportunities earlier in the season. You you, you go with a nil nil draw against uh, against Chicago at one point. You blow a lead against 
uh, since was it Cincinnati or no, they did it against Charlotte. I know a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. I mean, there's just what you do against Cincinnati and like, it's just, you have some, some ugly performances and whatever happens to them, they've earned across the board with just players lacking quality at times, uh, situations, not panning out turnovers and bad spots. And this is the team we've talked about this on the post game show several times at this point, this team, I don't know if I've ever seen one punished this badly for mistakes. Yeah. Like you make a mistake, and then uh, Lenny United gets burned every time. Sometimes, oftentimes, in every sport, yeah. you can get away with it every now and then. It seems like Atlanta never gets away with it. They get they have one turnover, and it's like, nope, that's going in the back of the net. <laughs> who okay. did you? It's like who did you piss off? You know? Yeah, it was a brutal run for for Atlanta throughout the course of this season, and it's just oh. disappointing. But I will say. Easier to talk about it after a win, you know. This team got a win. You're back into the situation that you need to be in. You're 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 hanging on for dear life in that ninth spot. Just keep hanging on. Just keep hanging. So so basically, it's the the kitten on the the kitten on the poster that's like on the uh, is on the tree limb. You, know, you just keep hanging on, hanging on, keep hanging on, baby. Just keep hanging on. Uh, how are it's you going spend- to be their season? Yes. Uh, how are you spending your international window, sir? Uh, covering the Yellow Jackets for 24-7 sports, talking all things college football, doing everything. We were, we were men of many hats. So I got my master's hat on because we just had the, the season finish up, you know, and it's I, I'm just I'm hoping all season's I'm hoping, going. Yeah, I'm hoping that we don't get into any kind of a trouble if anybody's watching out I-20. Sit there. He's got a logo on, you know, one of those kind of things. It, you know, put hey, like, man, yeah. this is a Georgia brand. <laughs> I, su- I support Georgia brands, all right? <laughs> No, but we got we have tons of high school football on Friday night. We got yeah. Falcons kicking off on Sunday. We're ready to party, man. This could be great. Plus, um, yeah, we got a lot of fun. Never, never heard of these Falcons of which you are referring to. So. Who? Yeah, hey, I've never heard of them. Uh, as always, uh, chap, it's great to have you on. When you can uh, take a breath and come and hang out with us at G Chap ATL on the 280 character app at 92.9 The Game and a bunch of other places. Don't be a stranger, chap. Crash whenever you need to, and you want to vent your spleen about anything. I'm I'll just got I got a full show, you know. I got a full full setup, you know. Because normally we're doing the steakhouse, and it's and I'm in the middle of a show, mm. and I can't break away. But you know, this is fun, and I, and I love chopping it up and talking to little five stripes, man. This well, is, you, uh, you, you got you got to wag season. you got to wag your finger at Sandy Sandy and uh, the the others in the, in the steakhouse and sit oh, there. Yeah. Look, I've got something I've got to do. I've got to go talk <laughs> soccer. I'll be back. I think oh, Sandy, man. I think Sandy Sandy would uh, give you an excused absence if uh, if you she would yeah I, sure. look I got to go talk to Nelson for twenty minutes <laughs> she'll, she'll she'll give you the excused absence she'll give you the piece of paper that you can get the hall pass on uh, as always my friend Garrett it's great to catch up with you and like I said don't be a stranger crash anytime you need and if you need a break from the steakhouse you know if you if you want if you want to have a different kind of an appetizer than or, or dessert just you know we're the key lime pie Do the hors d'oeuvres yes. Yeah. We're the, yeah, we're the we're the key lime pie to your steakhouse. So uh, anytime you anytime you want to crash, chap, you know you can. So it's great to see you, my friend, and enjoy the rest of your Labor Day, where I hope you're not laboring. Absolutely. All right. We're working. Good. We're having fun. See you, buddy.